Hi friends, welcome to Classic Education YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss about the ports in India. India being the seventh largest country in the world, it has the total area of more than 329 million hectares. So out of this 329 total geographical area of India, India has the border line of more than 22,000 kilometers. Out of this 22,000 kilometers, 15,000 kilometer is the land border and rest of the 7,500 kilometer is the uh, maritime border border see having the so much long coastline so there must be various ports which facilitate the trade and the development of the country so with respect to the economical development trading is the vital aspect for this trading ports play uh, the major role in this economy okay so because of the significance of ports in the economical development it becomes very significant for us to study about the ports of india so because of that we are going to you know discuss about the ports in india so basic facts related to the ports in india so there are some of the data given by the ministry of ports shipping and the waterways okay this is the union ministry which looks after the ports inland waterways as well as the shipping activities in the country so according to this ministry the ports in the country handle around 90 percent of the export and import cargo by volume and 70 percent by value so that means out of the total trade which is traded in india out of this uh, uh, trade 90 percent of the goods or the cargo which is exported or imported is constituted by the ports of india by volume okay by volume it is 90 percent of the trade and by value 70 percent of the total trade takes place through the ports okay this is the very significant fact <coughs> then according to this ministry there are 12 major ports in india 12 major ports in india and there are 200 non-major ports okay 12 major ports along with the 200 non-major ports no, non-major ports they are also called as the minor ports okay 12 major and 200 more than 200 minor ports the major ports are under the administrative control of ministry of shipping yes these major ports and the minor ports they are administered uh, they are administered by different authorities okay the 12 major ports of the country they are under the administrative control of the union ministry of shipping okay uh, ports and the waterways this is the union ministry which looks which looks after the all the major uh, activities in the major ports of I india so rest of the minor ports they are looked after that means they are under the jurisdiction of the respective state maritime boards or the state government each of the state governments which have the coastline they have the board called as the state maritime boards okay this board will look after the port activities in the respective state okay so by uh, this you know a fact tells that there are two categories of authorities one is under the union government and another authority is under the various state governments okay the union government looks after the major ports and the minor ports are looked after by the state governments now all the 12 major ports are governed under the major port trusts act 1963 yes though the shipping ministry of the central government might be the uh, authority over the ports but that ministry of shipping ports and the waterway that gets the authority from the law called as the major port trusts act 1963 okay the union government or the parliament passed the act in 1963 according to this act the ministry of shipping gets the power to control the ports in india okay this is with respect to the major ports but all the non-major ports or the minor ports are governed under the indian ports act 1908 before the india got the independence British had developed some of the ports in India okay they had passed on the law called as the Indian Ports Act 1908 to look after the port activity or the trading activities in the coastal areas okay so this is before independence and this law is after the independence okay so these two laws are basic statutes which provide the power to the state government as well as the central government okay so out of the 200 non-major ports or out of the 200 minor ports around 65 65 ports are handling cargo and others are port limits where no cargo is handled okay out of 200 minor ports only 65 ports are active with respect to the trading okay but rest of the 135 
minor ports they are not active with respect to the trading activities but they are used by the fishing vessels and by small ferries to carry the passengers across the creeks etc okay so here toll major ports along with the 65 minor ports they are involved in the trading activities commercial activities but rest of the 135 minor ports they will not handle the cargo activities okay they will handle only the fishing activities as well as the, they will facilitate the vessel movement of the fishermen okay so this is the role of minor ports then with respect to the coastal states yes there are 200 uh, minor ports and 12 major ports but in how many states these ports are located which country or sorry which state has the longest coastline which state has the most number of the ports in india we have to look after that also so there are total nine states and four union territories that forms the indian coastline yes i said india has the total more than 22000 kilometers of the border line which constitutes both land border as well as the maritime border this maritime border has the total length of 7517 kilometers okay see out of this 705 sorry 7517 kilometer so there are nine states and four union territories okay so out of these four yes nine states and the four union territories india as of now it has eight union territories out of this eight four have the coastline okay they have the maritime boundary out of these four union territories two are located in the mainland india okay and rest of the two are islands yes along with the states nine coastal states two coastal union territories are there but rest of the two union territories are the islands okay lakshadweep and the andaman and nicobar islands these are the island union territories now the these are the states this is the list of nine states which constitute the maritime boundary of india one is gujarat okay between uh, sorry gujarat and the maharashtra between karnataka and go, uh, maharashtra there is a small state called as the goa okay gujarat maharashtra goa karnataka kerala these are the four states in the western part of india or the west coast of india okay rest of the five states like tamil nadu andhra pradesh odisha west bengal okay these are located in the eastern part okay this is the bay of bengal branch of the uh, india's coastline and this is the indian ocean or the sorry arabi sea okay arabian sea this is the arabian branch of the indian coastline so these nine states constitute the total coastline of india then with respect to the union territories now we have discussed the states what about the union territories the main coastal union territories i have said four union territories will constitute the maritime boundary out of this four two are the moon, uh, mainland coastal union territories what are they puducherry and the diu and daman okay diu daman and dadar nagar haveli two union territories are now combined okay it is called as the diu daman and dadar nagar haveli union territory it is the mainland coast uh, co okay coastal union territory along with the puducherry puducherry or the pondicherry it also has the different constituents in it okay yanam puducherry and uh, karaikal these are the different units in the union territory of pondicherry okay these constitute the mainland coastal union territories and rest of the two islands are the uh, two union territories are the islands they are the andaman nicobar islands in the bay of bengal and the lakshadweep islands in the arabian sea okay these two constitutes the island coastline of india now this is the graphical representation of the 12 major ports in india the 12 major ports are deen dayal port trust or the kandla port in gujarat mumbai port in the maharashtra jawarlal nehru port trust again in the maharashtra marmagova in the goa state new mangalur or the navamangalur in the karnataka state kochin in kerala vivo chidambaranar uh, port in the tamil nadu chennai port in the tamil nadu again ennor port tamil nadu three ports are the three major ports are located in the state of tamil nadu then visakhapatnam major port in the uh, andhra pradesh paradeep post uh, sorry port in the odisha and the kolkata this is the major port in the state of west bengal these are the 12 major ports okay 
वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सिक्स मेजर पोर्ट्स आर लोकेटेड इन द वेस्ट कोस्ट एंड रेस्ट ऑफ द सिक्स पोर्ट्स आर लोकेटेड इन द ईस्ट कोस्ट ऑफ इंडिया ओके विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू द लेंथ ऑफ द कोस्ट ओके कोस्टल लेंथ देर आर थ्री मेजर स्टेट्स हुच हैव द लॉन्गेस्ट कोस्ट लाइन इन इंडिया गुजरात हैज द longest coast line that is with 1214 km gujarat enjoys the being the state having the longest coast line in india followed by andhra pradesh with the total length of 973 km of coast third state having the longest coast line is the tamil nadu with 906 km followed by maharashtra okay these are the four states four top states which have the longest coast line in india but these are the four union territories out of these four union territories andaman and nicobar islands has the 1962 km of coastline followed by lakshadweep with the 132 km okay so this is the total coastal length of india and the relative length of the uh, coastline in different states of india now the majority of the ports in india are located in these states yes there are nine states Out of these nine states, Maharashtra has the most number of the ports, with the fifty-three ports in in that state. Maharashtra is the sorry state having the most number of ports. But with respect to the longest coastline, Gujarat is the first state. But with respect to the number of the ports in a state, Maharashtra is the first state. Okay, but Gujarat here it comes to the second position with the forty number of ports in that state. Tamil Nadu, with respect to the number of ports and with respect to the total coastal length, it is in the third place. Okay, Tamil Nadu, and fourth is the Kerala. These are the top four states having the most number of the ports in those states. Okay, with respect to the union territories, Andaman and Nicobar has the again highest number of the ports with number twenty three. Okay, followed by Lakshadweep. So these are the states and the union territories having the majority of the ports in their in their coastline. then total coastal length of india i have said already that india has the total 7516 km plus 600 meters are the 7516.6 km this is the coastal length of india with this 7500 km of coastal length india is the 18th country which has the longest coastal line in the world okay india has the 18th longest coast uh, coastal length in the world Okay, the coastal length of the mainland India is the five thousand four hundred and twenty-two kilometer. See, out of this seven thousand five hundred and sixteen, so five thousand four hundred and twenty-two kilometer. So this is the mainland coast. Okay, so rest of the two thousand and ninety-four. This is the island coastline. Okay, see out of Total seven thousand five hundred and sixteen point six kilometer of coastline in India, five thousand four hundred twenty-two kilometer is under the mainland, and rest of the two thousand ninety-four kilometer is under the island union territories. Okay, so this is the division of coastal length of India. So. so this is the additional information because we are studying about the coasts and the maritime boundary of india it becomes vital for us to study about the division of coastline of india also okay so from kutch peninsula to the mouth of ganga river or to the mouth of hugli river india has the coastal area okay so between these two points there are nine states and four union territories so this coastal west coast is divided into konkan coast and the malabar coast okay maharashtra and the part of karnataka and the part of gujarat they constitute the konkan coast okay so this is the coastline of submergence this northern part of western coast of india is submerged but southern part of the western coast of india is emerged part of the a coastal line okay this is purely about the geographical concept just remember that the southern part of the western coast of india is emerged and the northern part is submerged part okay so this southern part of western coast is called as the malabar coast so significant part of that coast falls under the state of kerala okay this konkan coast is under the maharashtra and parts of uh, maharashtra goa and parts of karnataka okay konkan coast and the malabar coast this is the division of western part of 
at the coast and with respect to the eastern coast which is in the bay of bengal so again there are three divisions first division is the karnatic plain the northern sarkars and the utkal coast okay so utkal coast it is purely under the uh, state of odisha so northern sarkars it is under the uh, uh, state of andhra pradesh and the karnatic plains it is under the parts of tamil nadu as well as the andhra pradesh okay these are the divisions of the eastern coast of india <coughs> now we will study about the individual ports in india okay first is the chennai port this is the second largest container port after jawaharlal nehru port trust okay this is jnpt is located in the state of maharashtra near mumbai okay so chennai port is the second largest container port after this jnpt this is located in the bay of bengal no doubt it is an artificial and all weather port with wet docks okay so because of this port <coughs> because of it is due to the existence of the port that the city of chennai eventually became known as the gateway of south india so with respect to the cargo handled with respect to the size of this port okay with respect to the strategic position so this chennai port or the because of this port chennai came to be known as the gateway of south india okay then second port is the kochi port and it is also called as the kochin port located in the state of kerala this is the first transshipment terminal in india so these are the sobriquets are the these are the factual information related to the ports and this becomes very important okay you have to remember that this is the first transshipment terminal in india so this is an example for tidal po port that means the port here are the cargo cargo ships move or they will come and they will leave the port because of the based on the tidal activity or the they will use the tidal activity of the sea and based on the tidal movement they will come to the port or they will leave the port okay so in that respect this cochin port is a tidal port the port is generally called as the natural gateway for the industrial and agricultural produce markets of southwest india yes so here this port handles the agricultural producers okay so being located in the southwest part of india okay or the in the southern uh, in the southern part of the west coast of india so it handles various agricultural producers as well as the industrial goods so because of that it is called as the gateway to the industrial and agricultural produce markets in the southwest india okay the major goods are the the agro produce handled by this port are the spices tea and the coffee okay so these are the major goods which are exported or imported in this port then it is one of the centers for ship building yes along with the kandla port along with the chennai port this cochin port is also one of the centers for ship building in the country okay this is the significance of kochi port then third one is the ennor port located in the state of tamil nadu this is also called as the kamarajar port limited okay kamarajar port or the ennor port located in the state of tamil nadu okay this is the 12th major port of india and the first port in india which is public company yes this port is built under the ppp model or the public private partnership so here the government of india has the uh, highest share so in that way it is a public com uh, company it is located on the coromandel coast yes see there are various coasts i, I have I already categorized konkan coast malabar coast nardar sarkars utkal coast okay so out of those coasts this uh, ennor port or the kamarajar port is located in the coromandel coast okay southern part of the uh, east coast of india is called as the coromandel coast which is under the state of tamil nadu in that part this ennor port is located so here the major items are the major goods traded are the iron ore coal petroleum products and the chemicals okay so this is the significance of the ennor port or the kamarajar port then next port is the kolkata port again the major and the significant port in the bay of bengal this kolkata port is officially called as the shama prasad mukherjee port okay shama prasad mukherjee port trust located in the state of west bengal unlike other ports other major ports this kolkata port is located on the hugli river this is not the maritime port this is not located on the bay of bengal coast but it is located on the 
Hooghly River. It utilizes the advantage of Hooghly River. Okay, this is located in the city of Kolkata. It is the oldest operating port in India. Okay, this port was developed or the constructed by the British East India Company. Yes, when the India or sorry East India Company came to India for the trading activities, it had established various trading ports. They were called as the factories. Okay, this Kolkata was one of the factories for export and import of the goods for the British East India Company. See, this is now the oldest operating port in India. Okay, I have said in the previous slides that British government had already passed in the 1908 Indian Port Act. Okay, Indian Port Act 1908. That act was passed by the British government. That indicates that the British India Company had the British East India Company had the significant commercial activities in the country. Okay, so Kolkata is the freshwater port with no variation in the salinity. Yes, the salinity is associated with the the uh, sea water okay but the river water being the fresh water there is no uh, point in discussing about the salinity okay there is no salinity in the fresh waters so being the 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 port sorry the port being located in the hooghly river which is the fresh water river there is no variation in the salinity okay this is the fresh water uh, river and this port is also called as the diamond harbor okay so kolkata port or the shama prasad mukherji port or the diamond harbor port okay these are the different names of the kolkata port here the major goods traded are the tea jute coal and the steel okay next is the kandla port this is the most significant port in india with respect to the ship building activity or with respect to the cargo movement okay so this is also called as the Deen Dayal Port Trust. So this is located in the town of Kandla. Kandla Port or the Deen Dayal Port Trust located in the state of Gujarat. So this is located in the Gulf of Kutch. Okay, Gulf of Kutch, Gulf of Mannar. Ennore Port is in the Gulf of Mannar. This Kandla Port is in the Gulf of Kutch. Okay, so this is also known as the uh, tidal port because of the movement of the vessels based on the uh, position of the tides this is called as the tidal port so it was constructed after the partition yes this port unlike the Kolkata port Kandla port was constructed after after the India got the independence along with the independence India was also divided into two territories one is Pakistan and uh, India so part of the India went to the Pakistan along with that Karachi port went to the Pakistan okay when the Karachi port went to the Pakistan to handle the goods coming to India India need had uh, need to construct one port then it constructed it is called as the Kandla port okay so this Kandla port release or the it relieves the congestion of the Mumbai port Mumbai port is the busiest port in India okay with respect to the sea ports Mumbai port is the busiest port that means here the movement of cargo is too much the movement of uh, or the volume of the cargo handled is too much in the Mumbai port so this Kandla port reduces the congestion in the Mumbai port so this is the largest port by volume of the cargo handled so busiest is uh, different and the volume of cargo handled is different okay so here this Kandla port handles the highest volume of the cargo in India then Mangalore port this is the major port in the state of Karnataka so here the major items are the uh, that uh, traded uh, goods are the iron ore okay <coughs> iron ore is the major uh, good here so this is the deep water port and it, this is also the all weather port next is the marmagawa port or the marmagawa port this is situated in the estuaries of the river juwari yes kolkata port located on the uh, river hooghly here this marmagawa port is located on the river juwari okay so uh, this is in the state of goa it is a natural harbor and it is a leading iron ore exporting port in india Mangalore port also exports the iron ore and the marmagawa also exports the iron ore but between these two major ports marmagawa port is the significant port with respect to the iron ore because it it exports the highest volume of the iron ore from india then mumbai port this is the largest natural port and it is the largest natural harbor in india so earlier this port location was used by the navies of shivaji maharaj yes shivaji maharaj he is you know uh, 
significant or he is very characteristic with respect to his modes of fighting okay he was known for the guerrilla uh, guerrilla warfare along with the use of the navies okay he had built the formidable navy of to fight against the british as well as to fight against the various local rulers in the vicinity of his kingdom okay so here this mumbai port was used by shivaji maharaj this is the historical fact then this is the busiest port in india jawahar dweep this is an island in the harbor is yes, okay so in this mumbai port trust okay in this harbor there is a island called as the jawahar dweep this dweep or for crude petroleum products handling this dweep becomes very significant okay so for with respect to the storage or with respect to the storage of the uh, cargo this jawahar dweep is significant which is located near the mumbai port next again second major port or the second major uh, significant port is the jawahar lal nehru port trust okay earlier it was called called as the navasheva or the navi mumbai port this is the first major port of the country to become the 100% landlord port of india okay there are different concepts with respect to the port so there are intermediary ports there are landlord ports okay so this is one of the landlord ports which is the first landlord port in india this is the largest arti artificial port leading container port of india so this is located of the elephant island yes the elephant island jawaharlal island or the jawaharlal dweep th that is located near the mumbai port okay but there is one more island called as the elephanta island this Elef elephanta island is located near the jnpt <coughs> this jnpt is the terminal point for the western dedicated freight corridor of indian railways yes indian railway to handle the industrial activity or to facilitate the industrial activity to boost the uh, economical activity in the country it has come up with the one concept called as the dedicated freight corridors there is one eastern dedicated freight corridor and there is western dedicated freight corridor okay so for the western dedicated freight corridor this jnpt is the terminal point or this is the end point for western dedicated freight corridor which is then which is an initiative of the indian railways okay here the goods traded are the textiles sporting goods carpets pharmaceuticals and other chemicals okay then paradweep port this is located in the state of odisha this is the first major port commissioned after the independence yes out of 12 major ports this is the first port which is developed after the independence kandla port again it was also constructed after the independence but before the kandla port paradweep was constructed okay so this is the first major port commissioned after the independence located at the at the confluence of mahanadi river again kolkata on the hugli river okay here the paradweep port it is on the mahanadi river okay it is located at the confluence of mahanadi river and the bay of bengal at the mouth of the mahanadi river this port is located in the state of odisha here it deals with the export of iron and aluminium ores okay the major significant you know point is that here this paradeep port exports the iron and the aluminium ores to the country of japan okay japan is the leading importing country of these ores from india okay these ores are exported from the paradeep port then the tutikarin port located in the state of tamil nadu this is also called as the vo chidambaranar port okay ennar sorry ennor port is called as the kamarajar port again it is in the state of tamil nadu but this tutikarin port is called as the vo chidambaranar port okay so this is an artificial port located in the gulf of mannar okay gulf of mannar ennor port is in the koramandal coast here this tutikarin port is in the gulf of mannar this is famous for pearl, pearl fishery okay in the bay of bengal in the coastal waters of the tamil nadu there is a flourishing activity called as the pearl fisher industry for pearl fishery industry so this is this fishery industry uh, activity or the pearl fishery activity is very much flourishing in the 
town of Tutikorin. Okay, because of this activity, because of this commercial activity of the pearl fishery, this uh, Tutikorin port is also, or uh, sorry, Tutikorin town is also called as the pearl city of India. Okay, Hyderabad. For this fact, Hyderabad is also called as the pearl city of India. Along with that, now. Because of the emerging activity of the pearl fishery, this Tutikarin is also started to be called as the pearl city of India. Okay, here the major goods which are traded are the coal, salt, petroleum products, and the fertilizers. Okay. Next is the Vishakhapatnam port located in the state of Andhra Pradesh. This is the second largest port by volume of the cargo handled. Yes, the Kandla port is the largest port with respect to the volume of cargo handled but this is the Vishakhapatnam port this is the second port with respect to the amount of cargo handled or the volume of cargo handled okay this is located between the Chennai port and the Calcutta port okay Calcutta port in the north Chennai port in the south between these two major ports this Vishakhapatnam port is located in the state of Andhra Pradesh this is the deepest port of India Mangalore port, it is also one of the deep, uh, deeper ports in India. But this Vishakhapatnam is the deepest port, okay. So with the depth of more than 18 kilometers, sorry, 18 meters in the sea, this Vishakhapatnam port is the deepest port. So this port deals with the export of iron ore to the Japan. See, you might be observing one thing, these eastern coasts in India, sorry, uh, the ports in the eastern coast of India, they are handling the major item called as the iron ore okay paradweep port ennore port and the vishakhapatnam port they deal with the export of the iron ore especially to the country of japan okay so here along with the iron ore coal aluminium and other oils are also exported next is the vadwan port see so far we have discussed about the 12 major ports okay the ministry of shipping ports and the waterway of the government of India has categorized 12 major ports but with respect to the Sagar Mala program which was initiated in the year 2015 so that program aimed at constructing four major four more major ports in India okay so out of those four new major ports in India Vadwan port is the one okay this has become the 13th major port in India okay this is situated near the town of Dahu which is located in the Maharashtra state okay it is an ambitious part of the Sagar Mala program of the government of India so this has been planned by the JNPT or the Jawaharlal Nehru port trust as an all-weather all-cargo satellite port okay so this is the Vadwan port now we will discuss in brief of, about the Sagar Mala program so I have said that 90% of the goods by volume exported and imported are handled by the ports in India. Okay, so if you look into the 90% of the trade volume, so this is the major activity or the major contribution of these ports to the Indian economy. Okay, so to boost the economic activities in the ports to elevate the infrastructure of the ports in the coastal area the government of india has come up with the program called as the sagar mala program it is aimed at modernizing the ports to create the jobs as well as to create the connectivity between the ports as well as the various inland areas okay so these were the some of the aims of the program we will look into very brief about this program this was launched in the year 2015 okay there are five components under this program one is the port modernization and the new port development second is the port connectivity enhancement port linked industrialization coastal community development promotion of the coastal shipping and the inland waterways in india these are the five major components of the sagar mala program which was initiated in the year 2015 by the government of india okay So this is all about ports in India. We have discussed 12 major ports along with one new port called as the Vadwan port. Okay, there are 200 minor ports are the non-major ports in India. Okay, these ports, they contribute 90% of the total cargo volume handled in the India. Okay, so in that way, these have become the major part in the India's economical 
growth okay so this is all about the ports in india thank you very much for watching this video